That means it's a hot chopper. Chopper. Hot chopper. Chopper. What's a chopper? You know, a little bit north of Hamilton Island lies Cairns. I heard rumors it was possible to take a helicopter to Vlasov Cave. Even though it sounds like a distant relative of David Hasselhoff, it's actually a remote island in the middle of the Great Barrier Reef. There's a quick heart for my wife Molly. Wish you were here. on a sand cave, uh, but for my imaginary purposes, this is my first island. One of the benefits of having your own island is it often comes with a gourmet meal. Sand is actually not sand at all. It's actually ground up coral, and it's, it's some of the softest coral, I would say, but softest sand I've ever felt. Um, you could walk around on this and not feel a thing. It's, uh, it's quite a beautiful island. I'm glad for the next half hour it's all mine. You know, what I usually like to do on these uh, exotic places is actually go scuba diving. But having your own island, I thought it was a great chance to go out snorkeling. And literally, uh, you could see for miles and miles around. I feel like I was kicking and kicking and there wasn't a soul nearby. That's my first Great Barrier Reef snorkel, and it was incredible. Uh, we'll see what it looks like a little bit later, but it's time to get back on the chopper. Chopper? I marked the island so people knew it was mine. Carla's five years old and I'm Sienna. Um, we're in mating season at the moment. Yeah, so the female chooses the male. <laughs> the female chooses the male. And um, yeah, they're pregnant for 36 days. The koala's, 36 days? Yeah, the, the koala's about as uh, big as my fingernail when they're born. And they stay in the pouch for six months. Oh, cool. They've also got two thumbs and three fingers. Heading up the sky rail right now and we're actually on something called the cage. Uh, it's probably a little bit more dangerous than uh, what everybody else is doing, but I think it's safe. We're kind of harnessed in here. But what's really unique about Cairns is it's really where the rainforest meets the reef. So you can see the rainforest behind me, and we're going to scoot around real quick, and you'll be able to see the ocean. It's always best to find a funny Aussie guide to reveal the wonders of a rainforest and its inhabitants. This guy was hilarious. Last year, some of the uni students at the JCU came out to find a five metre amethystine python in the middle of devouring an adult wallaby, an agile wallaby. Uh, the poor wallaby was dead, luckily for it. Um, but as more people gathered uh, to see what was going on, taking photos, the flashes, um, it put the snake off and it regurgitated. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Left it there, because obviously, you know, if it's got a, a 40 kilo wallaby um, in its stomach, it's not gonna move away very quickly. Yeah. So you got rid of oh it my and gosh. It took off. You can't go to Australia without taking your didgeridoo 101 lessons, and here is what it's all about. See the way? Yeah. You go down here now. Okay. Where am I doing? You're going from the boys' box now, actually. You're going down to the abdominal muscles. Finally, I think I can make a. I can make some noise, but these guys are so talented, and it's actually really fun to watch them play because they can t continuously do this like circular breathing that is incredible. So when you go, give it a try. That's Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> After giving it a try, I thought I would watch the experts here at Jabalkai. Good down here. 
but nothing can be here. Not a salad again. Everybody, come on. <laughs> See? That's loud, see? Everyone, nice and loud, everybody, all together. If you're interested in going to Australia or New Zealand, send me an email directly or give us a call at Down Under Answers. We have experts waiting.